Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'll be talking about AWS Cloud Practitioner Certification Exam real questions. So recently I gave AWS Cloud Practitioner Certification Exam and I passed it with flying colors. So I would like to share some of the exam questions that I used for my practice. And these are some of the real exam questions which could appear in your exam. So without any further ado, let's get started. And I'll also be sharing these questions in around uh, five to six parts uh, or depending on the number of questions so in each video i'll be sharing around 10 questions with all of you so let's get started so the first question is a company is planning to run a global marketing application in the aws cloud the application will feature videos that can be viewed by users the company must ensure that all users can view these videos with low latency so basically a company wants its users to view the videos with low latency so it is basically about an application that will help in delivering these videos to the users so which AWS service should the company use to meet this requirement? So for this, you are given four options. And in this four option, the correct answer would be AWS CloudFront. The reason is uh, it is a content delivery network service that is being provided by AWS. And it is used for effective distribution of content to users across the world. And it distributes content with the help of edge locations. And users receive this content from the closest edge location. So what happens is basically there's a process involved in this. A user tries to access a web page, so let's say, in your application. The request is routed to the nearest edge location. And if the web content is in the cache of the edge location, it is sent to the user. And if the web content is not present, the edge server makes a request to the origin. So as soon as the first bytes is received by the edge server, it starts sending the data to the user. The data is then cached for further use. So this is how the complete process takes place when the data is being transferred from the server to the user. So the correct answer for delivering this uh, kind of service and uh, the correct answer is Amazon CloudFront and it is being uh, basically one of the content delivery network that is being provided by your AWS. So now let's look into the next question. So next question it says, which pillar of AWS well architectured framework uh, refers to the ability of a system reco to recover from infrastructure or service disruptions and dynamically acquire computing resources to meet demand. So the correct answer for this one is reliability. Um, so whenever you are practicing these questions, you can go through on the internet and look for a little bit explanation of why the correct option is the one that we selected over here. And also you can look into the other options why they are not the correct options that uh, we have not selected in the exam. Okay, so now let's look into the question number three, which is which of the following are the benefits of migrating to the AWS cloud? And you have to choose two options in this. So the options are operational resilience, discounts for products on Amazon.com, business agility, business excellence, and increased staff retention. So the correct option over here is A and C, which is operational resilience and business agility. So these are the benefits of migrating to the AWS cloud. Now let's look into the question number four, which is a company is planning to replace its physical on-premises compute servers with AWS serverless computing service. The company wants to be able to take advantage of advanced technologies quickly after the migration. So basically company is moving from on-premise to AWS serverless computing service and they want to take advantage of advanced technologies uh, during this particular migration. So uh, which pillar of the AWS well-architected framework does this plan represent? So the correct answer over here is performance efficiency. So guys, let's look into the fifth question that we have. So a large company has multiple departments. Each department has its own AWS account. Each department has purchased Amazon EC2 reserved instances. Some departments do not use all the reserved instances that they purchased and other departments need more reserved instances than they purchased. So this is basically about a company which has multiple departments and they have different uh, Amazon EC2 instances. Few departments, they have purchased it, but they are not using it. And there are other departments that have to purchase these reserved instances in order to make use of it. So the company needs to manage the AWS accounts for all the departments so that the departments can share the reserved instances. So which AWS service or tool should the company use to meet these requirements? So 
the options that are given to us is AWS Systems Manager, Cost Explorer, AWS Trusted Advisor, and the correct option is AWS Organizations. So basically, AWS Organizations is something um, that helps in managing the accounts uh, and uh, it helps in managing the accounts and it helps in generating the consolidated bills. The master account can get a consolidated bill for all the member accounts. You can also get a volume pricing discounts uh, while using AWS Organizations. You can also have service control policies at the organizational level. So that is also possible when you are using AWS organizations. So now let's look into the next question. Question number six. And this question talks about which component of AWS global infrastructure is made up of one or more discrete data centers that have redundant power networking and connectivity. So your options are AWS region, availability zone, edge location and AWS posts. So let's look into the correct option. The correct option is availability zone. So basically an AZ is one or more discrete data centers, each with redundant power, networking and connectivity housed in separate facilities. So AWS is responsible for maintaining data centers. So in short, an AZ is a collection of multiple physical data centers. So when you write any resource in our data center, it gets replicated to multiple data centers just to ensure that data is made more available. So in order to increase the availability of the data. So the correct answer, answer is availability zone over here. Now let's look into the next question. Which duties are the responsibility of a company that is using AWS Lambda? So basically it is asking that under the shared responsibility model where cloud and the user both share certain responsibilities which which is the duty of a user uh, who is using aws lambda so your options are security inside of code selection of cpu resources patching of operating system writing and updating of code security of underlying infrastructure so let's look at the options so security inside code this looks like a correct option because the code has to be maintained by you then selection of cpu resources so obviously you are not going to select which cpu resources will be utilized while you're using aws lambda which is a serverless compute service that is being provided by aws then patching of operating system which is also done by aws then writing and updating of code so that is something that you have to do since it is your code that you are putting on aws lambda and then security of underlying infrastructure which is also being done by aws and not by you because you don't handle the infrastructure security let's look into the correct options so the correct options over here is a and d which is security inside of code and writing and updating of code now let's look into question number eight so the question is which aws services or features provide disaster recovery solutions for amazon ec2 instances and you have to select two options and your options are reserved instances b ec2 amazon machine images amazon elastic block store snapshots aws shield amazon guard duty so basically it is asking which service provides disaster recovery solutions so so let's see the correct answer the correct answers are ec2 amis and uh, ebs snapshot so snapshot basically it means backup so backup is being taken continuously. So it will help in your disaster recovery. And then we have AMIs, which are the templates that are being provided by AWS, as well as you can create your custom templates. And it also makes use of uh, backup and recovery option on the backend. So uh, these are the two correct options for question number eight. Now let's look into question number nine. A company is migrating to the AWS cloud instead of running its infrastructure on premises. Which of the following are the advantages of this migration? So you have to choose two options. So your options are the first option is elimination of the need to perform security auditing, increase global reach and agility, ability to deploy globally in minutes, elimination of the cost of IT staff members, redundancy by default for all compute services. So the correct option over here is B and D, which is increased global reach and agility and elimination of cost of IT staff members. Now let's look into the next question. Question number 10. So the question is, a user is comparing purchase options for an application that runs on Amazon EC2 and Amazon RDS. The application cannot sustain any interruption. 
The application experiences a predictable amount of usage, including some seasonal spice spikes that last only a few weeks at a time. It is not possible to modify the application. Which purchase option meets these requirements most effectively? So these are the four options that are given to you and you have to tell which purchase option will meet the requirement of the user cost effectively. So it should be a cost effective solution. So your options are A, review the AWS marketplace and buy partial upfront reserved instances to cover the predicted and seasonal load. Option B, buy reserved instances for predicted amount of usage throughout the year. Allow any seasonal usage to run on snap on spot instances. Option C, buy reserved instances for the predicted amount of usage throughout the year. Allow any seasonal usage to run at an on-demand rate. Then your option D is buy reserved instances to cover all potential usage that results from the seasonal usage. And the correct option over here is answer C. So it says buy reserved instances for the predicted amount of usage throughout the year. So you have to buy the reserved instances depending on the usage throughout the year and then allow any seasonal usage to run at an on-demand rate. So this is your correct option for this particular question. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, you, you gained some knowledge from it. And these are some of the real exam questions. And I wish you all the best for your exam. And if you find this video informative, please share it with your friends. And please subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.